Have you ever wondered, who was the deadliest king in history? Let's travel back in time to the mid-19th century, when a young man named Leopold ascended to Belgium's throne. This wasn't just any ordinary coronation, this marked the beginning of an era under King Leopold II, a man whose reign would etch a dark chapter in the annals of history. Just like any monarch, King Leopold started his rule with a vision. He had an insatiable ambition, a burning desire that went beyond the boundaries of Belgium. His eyes were set on a grander prize, a vision to expand Belgium's influence across the globe. In the early years of his reign, he seemed like any other European monarch of the time. His focus on industrial and social reforms painted a picture of a progressive ruler. However, behind this facade of progress and prosperity, a more sinister plot was brewing. Little did the world know, the real story of King Leopold was yet to unfold in Africa. In 1885, King Leopold seized control of the Congo Free State, a territory roughly 76 times the size of Belgium. This was not a benevolent rule. Under the guise of civilizing the Congolese, Leopold unleashed a reign of terror that would forever scar the heart of Africa. The rubber trade became the backbone of this brutal regime. Congolese men, women and children were forced into grueling labor, harvesting rubber in inhumane conditions. Non-compliance was met with brutal punishments, often fatal. But the terror didn't end there. King Leopold's forces, the force publique, were notorious for their cruelty. To instill fear and ensure compliance, they committed unspeakable atrocities including mass killings. The death toll was staggering. Over 10 million Congolese lost their lives under King Leopold's rule. This was not just a reign of terror, it was a calculated and systematic genocide, a dark chapter in human history. In the heart of Africa, King Leopold had created his own hell on earth. As whispers of Leopold's brutal regime began to leak, the world started to take notice. Indignant voices began to rise from every corner of the globe, condemning the cruel rule of this unseen tyrant. The world could no longer ignore the horrifying tales of abuse and exploitation that were seeping out from the heart of Africa. Prompted by this international outcry, investigations were launched into Leopold's reign of terror. It was during this period that individuals like E.D. Morel and Roger Casement emerged as champions for the Congolese people. Morel, a British journalist, and Casement, a diplomat, risked their lives to expose the atrocities committed under Leopold's rule. Their relentless efforts finally brought the horrific truths to light, sparking unprecedented outrage and calls for justice. Despite his best efforts to hide his atrocities, King Leopold's reign of terror was finally exposed to the world. By 1908, under international pressure, King Leopold was forced to relinquish control of the Congo. The world had finally seen through the smoke and mirrors of his supposed philanthropy. The Congo, once his personal playground, was transferred to the Belgian government. It was a shift in power but the damage had already been done. The aftermath of Leopold's rule was a shattered country, its resources exploited, its people traumatized. The Belgian government took over the reins, but the scars of Leopold's reign ran deep. The Congo was left a hollow shell, its wealth siphoned off, its populace devastated. The ripple effects of his rule extended far beyond his reign, shaping the Congo's future in ways that are still visible today. From its economy to its culture, Leopold's influence seeped into every aspect of Congolese life. The pain and suffering he inflicted lingered, casting long shadows over the nation. King Leopold II, the unseen tyrant, left a legacy of pain and suffering, the echoes of which are still felt in Congo today. 